is a little bit different than the first signing day for us. Uh, we thought we'd done the, the majority of our uh, work as far as scholarship assignees in the first signing date. However, there was work to be done in the second one. And so our goals and objective were to make sure that we allocated these scholarships in the second signing date to meet some more of the needs that we had. Um, I think this whole class is a really reflection of a lot of hard work from our assistant coaches and the, the recruiting department as well. And then also uh, our players and our administration. And so we're really pleased with this group today. There'll be five guys, I believe, that uh, will sign uh, today that have signed. Us. And uh, Ian's going to go through those guys with you in a, in a couple moments. But what we did, uh, you know, we, we felt like we had a couple baseline needs that were going to be important for us to address. Uh, one was going to be wide receiver, another one was going to be corner, another one was going to be uh, tight ends, and then we started looking for, okay, who's going to be the best players after that. So uh, we're well pleased. Uh, we had a good strategy. We executed the game plan, and I think that you're going to find that this class is really going to prove to be pretty doggone fruitful for Cowboy football for many years to come. So at this time, I'm going to bring up Ian, uh, and he's going to talk about the guys we've signed, and I'll come back up to answer any questions you may have. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started with Xavier Carter, uh, cornerback from Medville High School. Uh, he's a guy we watched a lot of senior film on uh, his entire senior season, to be exact. Really liked his speed, competitiveness, and the physicality he played with. Uh, Coach Grant did a great job recruiting, uh, recruiting Xavier and getting to know him as a person. Uh, Coach Bull was able to go into the school in January, visit with uh, Xavier as well, really get to know him, what makes him tick. Uh, we brought him in the, uh, for his official visit the uh, last weekend of January, and uh, he committed while he was here, which was really cool to see. Uh, Kid was pretty excited about that. So we're excited about Xavier. I feel he's going to bring uh, real speed to our football program. Moving to offense, we got Joshua Cobbs, a uh, wide receiver uh, from Wagner High School in Texas. Uh, Joshua caught our, caught our attention throughout his senior year. Uh, he's a long athlete on film that runs really well, very competitive. He has great ball skills, very good at making contested receptions. Um, the physicality and really the, uh, the strain that he plays with as a, as a run blocker was probably, might be the, uh, the most impressive part of his game. So being from San Antonio, he actually uh, spent some time with uh, Levi Williams, who's a corner or a quarterback, excuse me, that was here. So then they know each other pretty well. And so we're excited to have Josh. So he's going to be a great fit for our program. Staying with wide receiver, we have Tyrese Grant from Dangerfield High School in uh, Texas as well. Tyrese, another guy that uh, kind of caught our eye going into his senior year and throughout his senior year as we were adding depth to our recruiting board. Uh, really like the fact that Tyrese played on both sides of the ball. He's very competitive, um, you know, uh, moves very well. He's explosive, he can get in and out of his transitions very well, and is really a natural pass catcher. Uh, we feel like he's going to bring a little bit of a different element to our wide receiver room. He's a great fit, and so I know we're excited about his future here. Moving on to tight end, we have Colin O'Brien from Saddleback College in California. So Colin was originally a quarterback that has since made the tra transition to tight end for us. Uh, what really caught our eye with Colin was his size, athleticism, and really his his raw upside as a football player. You know, we think he's got a bright future, and the sky is the limit. Uh, he visited us the first weekend of January, and uh, actually roughly about a week later, he enrolled in school here. So he'll be here for spring football. He'll be going through that with us. I know we're excited to see him out there and see what he can do for us. Lastly, we have Connor Shea, a linebacker from Monta Vista High School in California. Uh, Connor is a guy we kept our eyes on through his senior season. Uh, plays with great effort and physicality. He's smart, run, runs very well, and feel like he's got some athletic uh, uh, potential to tap tap into on top of that. Uh, credit to Coach Howe and Coach Aaron Bull. Uh, they did a great job recruiting him, getting to know him, and uh, he's going to be a great fit for our football program and uh, a uh, good player in the near future for us. So with that, I'll give it back to uh, Coach Bull. All right. Well, as you can see, a really complete class. Uh, guys have worked hard, and we feel like we were addressing a lot of the needs that we had, so I'll be here to answer any specific questions you may have on uh, the group or any specific questions you have on each one of these individuals. 
uh, you know, I, I personally did those visits, and so I've got you know quite a bit of a background on each one as well. So, uh, at this time, any questions that are out there in the audience? Yes. Uh, I'm curious about uh, Colin O'Brien. Mm -hmm. He's a really highly ranked junior college player. He necessarily put up a lot of numbers. I think he only caught mm -hmm. like six passes right. or so. What did you guys see, and, and where did you see it? Did you really have a lot of film? Well, first of all, there, there wasn't tons of tape on him. He chose to transition from quarterback to tight end. Their offense does not highlight tight ends a whole lot. Uh, he grew. Um, he, he One of the things that helped us was you know, during that recruiting process for him to still be able to go through the process and yet uh, make sure he's uh, on our campus, which he is right now. And so the signing date, uh, not the signing date, but our start date in the semester certainly helped. Uh, but we gleaned through a lot of the tape uh, that he, that was out there. And the reason why he didn't have a lot of the catches is because they were in what we call 10 personnel. They didn't operate at a tight end very much, but he's an excellent player. And, Really had some great, great options that were out there, so we're pleased to have him. And we've had good luck with uh, guys who have been quarterbacks that have transitioned to tight ends as well. If you look, whether it be Jacob Hollister, um, shoot, I'm trying to think of the other guys that we've had that, that have transitioned well at that spot. So it's been a good transition for us. Yes? Craig, you guys have three tight ends returning. You signed one in December. Is there a certain specific need or skill set that he brings to that position you think you're missing? Well, we always try to find a couple guys that are move guys and then guys that uh, have the physicality to block a defensive end at the point of attack. And so you're, you're looking for a couple different uh, combinations there. You know, we feel like he's got the ability to run, but certainly he's going to be a big, big, strong guy. And so we're trying to balance out, you know, as we utilize what we call 12 personnel quite a bit to have two different type guys in there at times. Yes. It was important for you guys to get a wide receiver, but how important was it to get a guy like Josh Cobbs, who's 6'4", uh -huh. 200 pounds, and get a guy who can really right. go up and get it? Well, we're, we're looking. I think you'll find a couple of our wide receivers next year are going to look different than what we have had, that we were able to redshirt two guys. And Josh is going to fit that mold as well. You know, he'll be a strong physical guy to be able to go up and get the football and then be a physical blocker. And, and what that does also give us the ability to – to take a guy that's a wide out move him inside and match him up against some linebackers and that really can give you a big big advantage in the run game but make no mistake he's got great ball skills uh, we watched him uh, in basketball practice he was he was on a really really good high school basketball team down there and uh, so we're excited about having him other questions yes um, a, a little bit off topic but do you have any um, update on the defensive you know, obviously, a few weeks ago, there were some defensive you bet. coaches moving in. Yeah, yeah we, I'm not going to announce that today. Uh, Tim Harkins is going to have an announcement on three positions tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yes. Craig, you mentioned some of the, the bigger receivers you guys signed <laughs> last year, not Sabrina and a guy like Josh. Bigger receivers, has that been an emphasis in recruiting last few years to get a bigger body that wide out? Yes, it is. Uh, what we find in the Mountain West, sometimes you can gain some mismatches when you have a big physical body and, and deploy that guy. Some of the cornerbacks or some of the defensive backs in our league sometimes don't have a, the stature. Uh, and so you're trading off a little bit at times with speed for size. But I think we'll have three really, four really big receivers, and then we'll integrate some other guys who are faster slot guys. Yes. A guy who's uh, apparently going to be a walk-on uh, grad transfer, uh, Nick Knoll. You know, uh, I can't comment on him. Oh, okay. Thanks for asking. Sorry. I can com No, that's okay. Nobody get no blood, no foul. I can say that we're uh, in the process of recruiting. I know I can say that. Any other questions? So don't get, uh, I'm not going to uh, bite anybody's head off for answering that. <laughs> any, any questions from the senior uh, part of the gallery over here? He's the senior citizens. When I look at the, at the 24 guys you brought in, do you, do you see any of these guys that you think might immediately step in? Uh, yeah, there's going to be. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to name a couple guys, but this is a unique class, and certainly sometimes positions dictate that. Typically, skilled players have the ability to play a little bit sooner than linemen, but you know, I do think uh, there's a lot of different guys within this class at all those positions that are going to have an opportunity. So our, our our baseline of what we look at is, one, does the guy have the physical ability? Uh, two, is there a positional need? And then three, do they have the emotional maturity to come in and play? I think we've got a pretty good idea on that, but we'll sort that out during the course of fall camp. And then some of it's going to be dictated by, you know, our health of our football team as well. Do you have any others that enrolled early? 
So I think we have two, two guys. Two, two guys. Uh, Wyatt Eckler is in the role, and uh, the tight end in the role also. Those be the only two early enrollments Correct. you have. Yeah, and that's gonna. That's it. I mean, we're pretty far along in school right now, but we've had to, and it's good to have those guys here. Yes. I know you're planning on filling another scholarship in this class, but mm -hmm. are there any of these that you can? count back to last year or is this strictly 25 hard? No, we chose not to do that. Okay. Uh, I know some schools will, uh, you know, you can do different things and manipulate the, the counting of the system. It still comes down to taking from one class to the other. We felt like we had a really good plan and so we chose not to do that. And so we have one scholarship left and, uh, you know, I think we'll make an announcement on that uh, in a future date here. Yes. Did the departures of the few coaches a couple weeks ago, did that? Did you feel like that affected anything at all? In it recruiting? always affects things a little bit, but we were pretty far along in the process. And uh, also, along with that process, we built up a lot of good relationships. So I, I, I don't think it disjointed this a whole lot. You're going to have some, but it certainly was not like it was in the old days. I mean, when you had one signing date and coaches would depart, uh, you know, we were pretty far along and had these guys pitching all pretty good. Yes, Signed two receivers and two linebackers in this class. Are you happy with those numbers? Would you like to get one more? Or? No, we hit the mark. Okay. Uh, and that's not some rhetoric I'm giving you. I mean, we, we wanted to sign two at uh, each spot. There were certain guys that we had uh, prioritized. Uh, then we had a pecking order, and, and those guys were at the top of our list at both spots. So we were really well pleased. Really well pleased. Yes. How, how do you feel about this receiving group going forward when you lose three starters? And I know you still have some guys that are part of the rotation, but a lot of younger guys going in there. Well, it's a great opportunity for these guys. And, you know, during the course of the fall, some of them served on the scout team some. Uh, and they, in, in comparison to past years, I mean, they really stress our defensive backs. And, and then along with that, when we played them in the game, they did some good things. I think uh, their, their size, because they were so uh, tall and long, it's going to take a little bit of uh, time to, for them to their bodies to catch up with their length. However, this off season is going to be able to do that. And I think to supplement these two these two receivers we got from Texas, you know, you get on the map and look where Dangerfield, Texas is. <clears throat> it's out there in the middle of nowhere. And this, I've always known this. So there's guys in that area can run. I mean, really run. And so I think we're going to be able to stretch the field. I think we're going to get uh, some mismatches, and I think they're going to be physical as well. And we're going to need to have a good year out. Our receivers, I think, much was said, uh, and rightfully so, about our lack of production in the passing game. I thought we got a little bit better at the end, but we're going to need to throw the ball better, complete the ball better, and make more plays, and particularly make more plays that are contested. And we think this next group is going to be able to do that. I think you need to wait to the second period here to get your two wide receivers. Um, you know what? Some of that came down to. Um, uh, the guys in Texas were in playoffs, so they're going to go a little bit longer. And so, um, and they, they were really, really uh, upfront about that. We knew Josh, Josh had committed to us, but he said he was going to sign on the second signing date. And so we counted on that, and he held with his commitment. Uh, and then Tyrese, we, we you know, we, we knew about him, but he kept playing. And so um, once we were able to uh, get down there and, and get in the home and get in the high school, it really made a difference. So. I would, quite frankly, I was a little bit nervous about it, though. You know, you would like to have all those guys uh, in the signing date that was early, but we weren't able to do that, but we were able to make the uh, uh, appropriate adjustments. You lost the one commit at the last minute to Washington State, the mm -hmm. channel team. Yeah. Did you pretty much feel that way when he didn't sign? Yeah, I, I, you know what, when he committed, uh, sometimes guys commit, and you try to explain to what we really mean by the commitment. I think his idea of the commitment was, I'm going to say, I'm coming here, but I'm going to keep on looking around. And, and we don't really count that. And I, we knew it uh, way back then. And, and we, we had plans accordingly. Uh, and so he went to Washington State. We had kind of moved on to, to plan B pretty doggone fast. We're well pleased with these guys we signed. Yes, Davis. Craig, how do you plan to handle the, the quarterback situation in the spring without Sean? And when do you plan to actually have him back? You know, he may be able to do some activities at the tail end of spring, but it's got to be, you know, really limited without any kind of contact. Um, you know, we're going to go through, Levi will get a lot of reps this spring, which is going to help him. Um, 
and then we'll try to, to have Sean come along physically in the course of the summer, but we're not going to rush Sean along uh, just to try to get him out there to get some repetitions. We're going to make sure that you know, he's able to come back and, and be more than just a, a service. Yes. Um, I know you guys were working on getting Trey Smith that medical uh, retreat. Did that end up going through? Did yes, it did. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're, we're excited about him. He should be pretty deep in the running back position. Yes, I know you, you said you, a player's never lost a position in that chart to an injury. Whenever Sean does get back fully, will there be a competition mm -hmm. between him and Levi? I'm just, you know what? You, you've, you've stated a policy that, that I've had as a head coach. I don't remember telling you that policy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you... I yeah, get yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I trust you. Yeah. Um, you're sure? I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. You can testify on that. Okay. okay. Um, you know what? Well, what we'll do is we're going to play the the, the guy that uh, is going to be in best position. You know, we'll go into fall camp. There'll be some uh, some live work that we'll do. We can simulate some things that put a quarterback under duress to be able to split those two guys. I think it's going to be great, healthy competition, and we'll have two very, very capable quarterbacks that are great competitors, and they provide a lot of leadership. Could you see using them both in the same game? Um, well, you know, Towards the end of the year? Typically, we have not done that, but uh, Coach Vegan and I have talked about that, and we're certainly more open to that. And there's a skill set that both of them have that uh, we think bring a lot to uh, uh, add to our offense. And then along with that, when you have two guys that have played and then are, they know going into the game that they're going to play, even if it's a limited role, you know, they're, uh, even though a backup quarterback pays great attention to detail, the fact that he knows that he's going to go in at a certain time, that really sharpens his sword. So, you know, we're kind of leaning towards doing that. We'll see how those two guys perform during fall camp. But I think we're in a really good position, and both of them are mobile, and it gives us a, a lot more flexibility. When you're looking down that play sheet and you're calling a predetermined quarterback run, you get a little bit nervous when you don't have much behind them. And the fact that both of these guys show really good ability to run um, at times that are predetermined, and then at times that are unscripted. Uh, that really opens up our playbook. Uh, now, we would not like to have them run as much as we have, but um, you know the, the, the dual threat of both of those guys, I think Warren said both of them are going to get a really hard look, and that may also mean, I, I doubt that we'll do the, I don't know, Steve Spurrier when you ran quarterbacks in every other play, I doubt we'll do that. Uh, but I think that you could see both of them play. The fact that dual threats, too, it doesn't tip off the other team as to what you might go to offensively. Yeah, there was, there was uh, without question, this last year uh, when the other quarterback came in, people began to adjust the call sheet. They still have to prepare for different things, but when you have two guys that are able to do a lot of the same similar things and stay fresh and stay uh, really engaged, it's going to help. Okay, I think we got somebody on the line out there. I heard rumblings. Any question from anybody on the line? Five, four, three, two, one. That concludes today's press conference.